Hello, fourth grade. It's good to see you. Are you having fun at home? I can tell a lot of you are having a great time doing these art projects, so that makes me very happy. Today, we're gonna start another optical illusion, and I remember that some of you got this started in art class, but I'm gonna do a different one today so you don't have to repeat the one you already started. But optical illusions are when you fool the eye with your artwork to make it look like things are going away from you or moving or vibrating or coming out at you. And it gives it an illusion that you've got space or distance or depth on your paper. So we're gonna follow these step-by-step -step instructions to create an optical illusion. And you can do it all with pencil and paper. And then if you have any markers or colored pencils or crayons, you can really make it pop by shading. So I will demonstrate at the end of this video how to do the entire project. It's a two week lesson, so you can stop at the end of part one and take a rest and come back the following week on part two and finish doing all the coloring and the shading. I can't wait to see yours. The learning goal for this lesson is I can recognize and define op art. And I can use lines and shapes to create an optical illusion. Op art, also known as optical art, is a style of visual art that makes use of optical illusions. When the viewer looks at op art, they may see movement, hidden objects, vibration, or swelling and warping. Simple repeated lines can create a 3D illusion. These lines create depth, distance, and space on a flat piece of paper. That is the illusion. There really is no distance. Parallel lines seem to appear flat, but curved lines appear to bulge outward. In our drawing lesson this week, we're going to try to create an optical illusion that looks like the forms are bulging out at us and curving away from us. I will show you two different ways to draw this project. One we'll call the easy way, and one is more challenging. The easy way will start with straight lines touching a center point. Each space is filled with a series of curved lines. The more challenging way will start with a center point also, but we'll use wavy lines to go out to the edge of the page. You can start by holding your paper any way that you like and put a dot in the middle of your paper. And then draw some straight lines, if you're doing the easy way, to the edge of the paper. I'm gonna do about nine straight lines two or three going to each side. You might want to use a ruler or the edge of an envelope for a straight edge to trace to make your line straight. Okay, now I will demonstrate the more difficult way. Again, start with a dot in the center. And this time you're going to make a slight curve up and a slight curve down, very slight. A little curve up and a little curve down. It's like a wave and draw all the way to the edge of the paper with this little wavy line. Don't make it too busy, up and down, up and down. It, it won't look right. Just do a little bit at a time. It's almost a straight line, but it's got a slight bend to it. Start in the middle, and again, go all the way to the edge, three or four times to every side. Okay, now in each one of those little triangles, you're going to fill it with a very curved line. Notice I'm starting almost in the same spot and curving up and back down again, touching the lines on the two sides of my triangle as I do it. And I'm gonna just repeat this until the entire triangle is filled in. All of the curves go away from the center dot. I'm doing mine in black marker because it feels like so much work to do in pencil and then trace again in marker. And once you have the hang of it, you can switch to black marker too. But in the beginning, you might wanna try the first one in pencil in case you really don't know what you're doing and you need to erase it and start over. It's really hard to start over when you're using a permanent marker because it's so permanent. Now I get it. Notice how this illusion is already starting by using these curved lines 
it looks like these shapes are turning into three-dimensional forms like cones, like little ice cream cones on their side. Oops, I got a little bit on my table there. If you are using a black permanent marker, you really might want to cover your work surface with something like an old newspaper or a magazine so you don't end up getting black marker on your parents' kitchen table. I'm going to speed up my video here so you can see how this turns out when I'm done filling in all the spaces with the curved lines. Take your time. Don't try to catch up to me. Pause the video as you're doing yours and follow along. Remember, this is the easy way and this one is the hard way. So you've got to decide which way you're going to do it before you begin. I'm going to start off by coloring in the lines on every other one. And then if you want to stop there and let that be your finished drawing, you could stop there or continue on like I did and fill in all the spaces. This is the end of part one. You get to stop here for the day. You've done a great job and next week we'll talk about how to color them in with values. Welcome back to part two, shading and coloring. The first thing I want you to do is get out a piece of scrap paper and practice with a pencil making different values of the color gray. So the pencil is going to basically be a dark gray if you press as hard as you can and stay in the same spot for a long time. And then you can make it lighter by pressing lighter or moving your hand more quickly away. I went all the way from dark to medium to light and now I'm going backwards from light to medium to dark. That's what we're going to be doing inside each of the forms that you created from your optical illusion. Now I'll try it in color. The harder I press, the darker the value. The lighter I press, I can lighten the value. In the middle, I'm going to try to go so light that it actually becomes white. And then I'm going to repeat what I did, but in the opposite direction, from light to medium to dark, pressing harder each time. So that's what I want you to practice. On a piece of scrap paper with a pencil or a crayon or a colored pencil, Try creating a value scale. If you don't have any colored pencils or crayons, you can do this entire shading just using a pencil, a regular pencil. Or you might want to pick out your favorite colors that you plan on using and set them aside. All right, I'm going to try one with just pencil. I'm going to start at the very edge of my curve, pushing very dark to create a darker value. And as I move towards the middle, I'm getting lighter and lighter. Once I'm in the middle of that shape, I'm going to leave it white. And then I find it easier to always start with the dark value and then gradually fade up. So I'm going to start on the other side and work my way towards the middle, leaving it white in the center. That's how it looks in pencil. I'm going to choose every other space and do the exact same thing, pressing dark, pressing lighter, switching to the other side and pressing dark and then pressing lighter. Don't forget to leave it white in the middle. That's going to create the feeling of a highlight to make it really create the optical illusion that it's bulging out at us and creating a highlighted shine in that one spot down the center of the cone. I'm going to speed up here so you don't have to watch me color in all my spaces. Now, because I do have some colored crayons, I'm going to color in between the pencil spaces. So all the ones that had been left white, I'm going to use purple crayon and color them in. I found I have two different purple crayons and one seems a lot darker than the other. So I'm using that darker purple to really build up a shade in the corners of my cone or the edges, I should say. All right, I'm picking one of my other favorite colors now, this pinkish violet color and I'm going to color in all of the lighter values first and then I'm going to take my darker red violet and color harder along the edges of my cone to build up that three-dimensional illusion. See that? I'm just pressing harder and using a slightly darker value of the crayon. 
I keep breaking my tips. Here, I'll use the other end. I'll probably stop after this one and show you some examples that I found online or from other students in our school that have done this in the past.